Okay, <coughs> so hi guys, just to get a quick uh, <coughs> recapture of what we did today using NCS Fluent. So I got Fluent version 15, I think here. So these are the options I'm choosing uh, to for it to be 2D at the moment. And I'm also cho choosing double precision, which means I have something like uh, 0.000222 uh, up to like six, de six decimal places accuracy. If I didn't click that, and if I had uh, some wall spacing or something which had 0 0.00022 so I'm only going to do up to 0 0.0002 so it doesn't capture where the where the walls are um, accurately so basically double precision means more decimal places more accuracy right um, I'm also going to uh, click on the display mesh after reading. Uh, sorry about that. Display mesh after reading. So I want to see the mesh when I open the software. And for the moment, I'm going to select uh, the serial option instead of the parallel. Later on, you guys can, when you have bigger meshes, 3D configurations or something, you can just click on parallel and select how many processors you want. Uh, the computers in the Queen's lab have up to, uh, has eight processors, but I recommend using seven uh, maximum, leaving one for uh, the communications and for the computer to do other stuff, basically. Okay, so you will click OK, you tap on this. Right, so I get Tensys Fluent 15 open. And and uh, I'm going to import the mesh that we did today instead of the instead of the cylinder. Maybe I will import something else. Uh, so, first that. Okay. Uh, at the moment, I just have the cylinder mesh. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to import the cylinder mesh. So, now the software has displayed the mesh as soon as I as soon as I opened as soon as I read the mesh. If I want to zoom in, I can use box zoom. Just uh, right click on the, left click on the mouse and drag in. And if I want to zoom out, I can use uh, the other, so if I start from here and go here, it's a zoom out. But if I start from the left side and drag it to the right side, it's zoom in. Okay, you can even use uh, this this guy here to zoom in and out. Pretty easy stuff, and this pan button here to move around. Like I said, uh, first thing you want to do is see if you, if the uh, geometry units is correct. And I see that my I made the mesh in meters, and it's come to NCS Fluent as meters, so I'm pretty happy with that. If if it was created in millimeters or inches or centimeters, you need to choose the right one and convert it. Or you can even specify uh, scaling factors on your own, X and Y, because it's a 2D one. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to do a report quality uh, where This 
Yes, it is not moving. Yes. I'm going to do a report quality of uh, to see. Oh, there it is. Okay. To see how much my mesh uh, is it bad or not. Um, and it's saying warning minimum orthogonal quality is below 0 0.01. But that's because we have very high aspect ratio elements, like I said before. Uh, very thin but long elements there. Uh, you can increase the number of points, uh, the nodes, around the, if I remember correctly, we use 20 in this direction, 20 in this direction. You can change it to something like 60, 60, and this value will improve uh, because we made a quick mesh. And while we, while if, if we are to do that, will also improve the aspect ratio. So this aspect ratio is delta x divided by delta y for, for, for a single element. So the highest aspect ratio here is uh, 1,461. Uh, sorry, 14,610. It should be below 10,000. Uh, but even with this values, fluent can be used if one knows how to control the solution using the equations, uh, relaxation and stuff. So for the moment, we'll be using uh, pressure-based equations in compressible flow, steady state and nothing unsteady. Even though uh, there's no harm in going and selecting transient if you want to, because it will, it will just change one thing uh, and it's just this this uh, run calculation here where we, we get an option to put the time step size instead of uh, if we put steady we get how many iterations just a very basic setup how many iterations how many times we want to iterate the solution until we are happy um, so Let's leave it at steady for the moment. Maybe I'll do an unsteady one later. To, but to be honest, because the lift force coefficient is fluctuating on the cylinder, it's better if we will use uh, an unsteady solution, a transient solution, because um, it represents a more realistic uh, way of, because there's separation happening behind the cylinder. Anyways, we'll leave it at steady for the moment. There's no, we are not considering gravity as an external force for this particular simulation. And we will not be doing that for most of our simulations. And to be honest, any of our simulations. So let's go into the second tab models. Um, we are going to choose, there's no multiface. Uh, it's only uh, gaze. And no transitions are occurring from liquid to solid or liquid to gas or gas to solid, so we don't need multiphase. But we do need to solve the energy equation as we are using a pressure far field. And we'll do that. And we also need to say how we will calculate our turbulence quantities. So basically, it's the viscous setup. And like I said before, it's either going to be SA equation or K omega SST for aerospace configurations. Uh, so if I want, if I want to prove that to you guys, I can just go Google, great Google, and just type in you know, and choosing the right turbulence, just go somewhere. Uh, basically, I don't like this, reading this whole thing. Uh, let's just go in here and, okay, <clears throat> I think this one is showing My laptop is a bit slow, but show the 
Okay, so the Spalot LMRS models are mainly used for aerospace and turbo machinery applications and some positives and negatives about it. Uh, K Epsilon model, uh, that is this one, is used good for external flows as well, but mostly mostly used for it's used for wide range of equations, but uh, for example like rotations, recirculations, jets. Uh, but we are more interested in the shear stress transport, K omega SST model. Again, the K omega model is popular in aerospace and turbo machinery applications, separation, reattachment. So it captures it captures what we need for aerospace quite well. So without Father, you let's move forward. I'm going to choose K Omega SST and with a production limiter. Okay, I'm going to just gonna click OK, and that's all the setups I need to really do. There is no radiation, there's no heat exchange, there's no species transfer, there's no solidification or melting, and we are not considering acoustics or sound effects. But we need to set up uh, some materials where we are going to say because we are using a far field, we have to, there is no outlet, so we have to say that we are using ideal gas. But if we are to use an inlet at this side and an outlet at this side, then we can just leave it as constant and instead of, instead of using models uh, energy equation also, we can turn off and in the boundary conditions, Instead of far field, we are going to have an inlet and outlet. But for the moment, let's just keep it as a far field. Change to ideal gas, change create. This viscosity is, is very important. This is how you can change Reynolds number for certain configurations. So this is something called the dynamic viscosity. Again, dynamic viscosity. Of air we're interested in. Okay, so the dynamic viscosity of air is okay, at 300 Kelvin. The dynamic viscosity is about one point in between this value, so 1.725 to the 10 to the power minus 5 and 1.8 point 10 to the power minus. Uh, five and in fluent if set up as 1.78 which is okay you can change this weather if you are to change the change the Reynolds number like in in point wise y plus calculator the dynamic viscosity is 1.8375 we can change that to the value in fluent 178 and compute the Reynolds number for make point 0.1 which is 33 meters per second so yeah you can just use basic proof of top so make three meters per second um, might be wrong but make okay this one is better so point 0.1 34 meters per second so fine 34 and we are configuring for Reynolds number of 2.3 millions, I think. Yeah, 2.3 millions. So let's say you wanted to change it to 23 millions. What we're going to do is add another zero here. And now it's 23. So we reduce the viscosity 10 times and we increase the Reynolds 10 times. Anyways, this is how you calculate the Reynolds number density times the velocity at the inlet times the cord length divided by the dynamic viscosity. And there's some other stuff here which you really don't need to worry about. It's how they calculate this first wall spacing, first cell height. Um, you can have a read if you want to. Okay, so change create, close. 
Um, Cellbone conditions is not a solid, it's a fluid. Yes, please. Okay. Not much to set up, really. Uh, cylinder is a wall, we'll leave it. We leave that as it is, and far field will change into a pressure far field. So again, if we if I had done inlet outlet kind of configuration rather than a pressure far field, I can just go here velocity inlet, and then for the outlet I can just choose the correct boundary condition velocity, uh, sorry outflow or outlet vent. So I'm going to select pressure far field. 0.20 meters per second x component flow direction one straight flow and point one. one so how do we choose this turbulence intensity to be 0.1 percent right so Like I said before, a lot of the help I've been getting is from this website, CFD Online. You can you can also um, I have an answer there for someone. So this guy is doing a CFD for light aircraft and he's wondering what turbulence intensity and turbulence viscosity for to use on the boundary conditions. What are the typical values? I've given some answer as well, but uh, so basically for external aerodynamics aircraft, usually turbulence intensity is below 1%, and uh, turbulence intensity is calculated in this formula. But let's see what other people have said. Um, okay, so for numeric simulation, uh, sail plan. 0.01% internal 0.1% so something about 0.1% seems to be correct okay so that's we got up to here done like I said there's no uh, there's no movement of um, the mesh it's a steady mesh so we're not going to do anything there and the reference values we are going to compute from the far field okay when I select compute from far field some values are automatically updated except the area and the length might not be updated but in this case it's it's one and the depth is uh, basically the extrusion in z direction is one meter even though this is a 2d a lot of softwares have 2d uh, grids but they are actually in 3d just one cell extrusion just to make it easier for the solver so you don't need to worry about this just make sure that you've got the correct area, which is for an airfoil or for a cylinder, just the same as uh, the code length from here to here. So we got everything correct. Now we are going to go into solution methods. So there's a couple of methods here. Simple, uh, which is um, I'm going to give you if someone wants to have a read about this stuff I'm going to so simple is equation so it's a method to solve the now yes stock equation how uh, the pressure and the velocity and everything is linked and how they are iterated and simple and then you got here simple C. Simple C and uh, uh, okay, simple, simple C, which is just also semi implicit pressure linked equations, but in a more uh, coupled way and with skewness correction. And you got PISO which is called pressure why is it why is it not okay pressure implicit operator so if someone later wants to get into uh, research in this field or something in the numerical field rather than the applied field, 
they can do more research in this kind of stuff and this is basically just the accuracy the ways the gradients are calculated for using which methods uh, least squares is good enough the pressure which which accuracy order so first order is less accurate second order is more accurate and there's other stuff too so like density quick is much uh, higher order uh, calculations but for the moment we are just doing everything to be second order and turbulence quantities to be first order up point um, if you want to have a understanding of what's really all all this stuff is about i recommend you to uh, read for our Okay, so cafes. Okay. Okay. For introduction. I'm not I'm not very sure about that. Okay, this is the book, sorry, Computational Methods for Fluid Dynamics. Okay. Clear that. Computational Method for Fluid Dynamics. And uh, also, you got uh, an introduction to computational fluid dynamics. So I, I kind of swap the names. If you want to read basic understanding of the numerical setup for these CFD softwares, you can just go in there and read these two books. It's quite well written in terms of what I have read. Okay, moving on. Like I said, this is a very important part. Solution controlling. Uh, I usually leave the energy equation to be 0.9 or above. Otherwise, the solution doesn't converge too fast. The viscosity I leave at 0.7. Uh, dissipation is fine and turbulent kinetic energy is fine. The momentum I usually leave at 0.3. And everything else like as it is. And the momentum also let's leave it at 0.5 for now. And creating a monitor for the forces. So often we are going to have to uh, see for aerodynamics you have to use these three things the drag the lift and the moment so the moment can be either pitching or rotate or, or rolling or yawing but in two dimensional it's obviously just going to be the pitching moment so just uh, I'll show you how to do one of these so I'm going to say okay this is CL1 on the I'm going to select this zone cylinder and I want it to print it to this console while solving and also plot it to a window you can specify which window you want and I also want if I I mean if I wanted to I could also write it to a file so that it will save but I don't want to if you want to keep the history of the convergence you can do that of um, you can do other stuff like how many uh, iterations you can average over when for 10 iterations I want to see what's happening to the lift or drag force at every moment. So since this is lift, um, let me just use some of the core features in this one. I guess why not? Okay, so all right, so undo that and choose something darker. Okay, that didn't work very well. If imagine just imagine that this is your air force and the lift force is in this direction and the drag force is in this direction. Okay, so the lift, uh, if it is completely up, the y force vector is one and x force vector is zero. 
and for the drag uh, it will be it will be x1 and y0 so I'm gonna clear this clear 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 and then, okay Oh, okay. Yeah, and you uh, you can kind of get uh, how to do the drag now. Just print plot print. I don't want to plot that. You can choose to and x x one y zero and moment. Okay, so when we are doing moment, when we are making the grid, we need to know where the center point of the geometries so since I made this geometry I think the center point is at 0 0 0 so I'm going to leave it x y y 0 x 0 y 0 and print to console and the axis will be z not 1 z minus 1 because we want to calculate pitching moment in this direction in this direction not in this direction or towards up Click OK. Go hybrid initialization. Initialize calculation activities. So I didn't discuss this today. If you want to auto save, for example, if you wanted to see what happens in every 500 iterations, you can just create an auto save and just just it will save automatically the software will save your data so for example if you're going home or something you can choose to save <coughs> every thousand or ten thousand iterations so even if the software collapses you'll be fine if not uh, if you're doing an unsteady you can also click to save in iterations also you can do other stuff like uh, create create and uh, so for 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 steady state simulation you can't but if I had here unsteady you can create a solution data export so for example let's say I wanted to observe the pressure what's happening with the pressure at the node and CFD post that's the software we are going to use to visualize the results for all these Sorry, CFD post compatible and static pressure so oh surfaces are automatically selected. I think. Usually you're going to select most of it. I'm gonna just select everything and frequency. I'm going to say every uh, hundred time steps and then you give a folder and you can or give the file name either with the time step or flow time okay but I'm not going to do that since we we are doing a steady step simulation so I'm pretty much ready to go I'm just going to say a thousand iterate 10,000 iterations click calculate and see what happens so my laptop is a bit slow because it's not using Demon processors like how we did in the top. Ah, sorry, in the labs. Okay, I'm just going to click cancel. Something has happened. Uh, so it was writing the software, the the data for every iteration because I accidentally have clicked here. Uh, auto save every iteration. Okay, calculate. Fine, it's working much faster now. And when do you have an acceptable solution? This is not an acceptable solution because these values are still uh, except for this pitch lift and CL is lift coefficient, CD is drag coefficient, CM is uh, pitching moment coefficient. But these things here, the continuity, the velocities in X and Y direction, the energy equation, the turbulence equation, the k omega is still not com not fully not reached to a level I'm happy with. Basically if it reached something below one to the power minus three 
all the equations then I know I have a good solution but uh, I don't have that kind of time in this tutorial to wait so you guys can wait until if it doesn't converge you can increase the number of iterations and just keep iterating until these values drop down to 1 to the power minus 4 or below or 1 to the power minus 3 at least after we do that we can just go graphi uh, graphics and animations counters and then loads of options here pressure velocity temperature uh, I'm going to do a field one and display auto function that on click Good. okay Fine. I know what's happening now that with the, in terms of pressure I can see what's happening in terms of velocity as well so if I zoom out I see there's a separation low velocity region here high velocity where the cur curvature is high and we can even do vectors and uh, yeah, these arrows are quite small at the moment so what you can do is you can increase the skip to one and scale it ten times more so I'm scaling the arrows to see what's happening more okay we have a better picture of what's happening now so rotation here and separation so it's attached flow here because it's attached to the geometry but once it reaches here it starts to separate before that here it was attached kind of almost attached so that's when separation happens um, I can also go to part lines and select velocity and choose all this keep at least 50 times at the start and click display and pulse it even and the step size is too small so it's showing me very small thing. So I'm just going to increase the step size and pulse now okay I have a better picture of what's happening now I'm going to stop that decrease the I'll skip to 10 and I have more points now and then pulse it again uh, okay great and just play around find other stuff that you like turbulence derivatives whatever you may have in mind uh, there will be no particle tracks because we are only using air we are not using any solid particles or liquid particles or injectory particles to track so actually even though I had just quickly looked at this in fluent to see the results it's not really what you what I want before I go into that discussion let's just do a plot as well to see just on the cylinder sorry so this is how the pressure coefficient varies on the upper and lower surface uh, so the static pressure is somewhat like minus 1500 minus 2000 pascals in the on at the middle point and minus 1000 something at the upper point so this is the lower side this is the upper side I think <coughs> okay so that concludes uh, the software tutorial for I think the third one the first one in fluent but the visualization uh, that actually I want to do is going to be in CFD post so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go file <coughs> export CFD post select everything so I'm just doing I'm just doing for for the last time step if you wanted to do every other time step or time step that you wanted you can go to like I said transient unsteady simulation and and uh, go to solution control no sorry calculation activities and create an export 
position export at every frequency that you 10, 10 time steps or 20 time steps. But here what we have is a steady state simulation so the final result is what we are interested in. And I'm going to export that result. Export to CFD post. I'm going to export all these stuff here. and write them to a file which is a case file in CFD post. I'm just going to save it in a folder called CFD post and name it as cylinder visualization. Okay, so done. I'm going to, because this video is getting too long, I'm going to launch another video and explain how to use CFD post.